Well, I just thank you, Lord, for what we felt last night. God, I just pray, Lord, that you continue pouring your spirit out upon us, God. Father, help us, Lord, to become a better church. I'm not talking about the building, Lord. I'm talking about us coming together as one. <coughs> Father, we just pray, Lord, that you could have your way with your children. We give you all the praise and glory for it all. Amen. 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 Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. You know, if, if we as a church We take this scripture and apply it to our lives. There is no telling what this church is doing. So many times we're slow to hear, but yet swift to talk. And it ought to be the other way around. We ought to be listening, <coughs> learning. When we study our Bible, we ought to be praying that the Lord will show us things. So many times we're slow to hear, and we're swift to hear, or swift to talk, speak. For well, the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. You know, a lot of times I can go to a different church and all you hear is people putting people down. And talking about them behind their back. Or sometimes they can do their face. Is that not the wrath of man? And he worketh not the righteousness of God. You know, that's kind of like trying to strap with fingers. You can't. You can't do that. You're either for God or you're against him. You can't have it split right down the middle. A lot of times we uh, we speak we speak before our brain kicks in. You know, a lot of times if we'd be slow to speak, our brain would kick in and say, you might not ought to do that. Amen. I've been, I've been guilty. I'll, I'll be the first to admit it. I've been, been guilty. Be, be fast to speak before the brain kicks in. Of course, everybody knows my brain ain't that fast. So I got to wait a few minutes. Let my brain kick in before I say something. Because I don't want to, out of ignorance, hurt nobody's feelings. I don't want to say something that is going to hurt somebody. You've heard those saying, eh? Better seen than not heard? Yeah, <laughs> better seen than not heard. That's, that's probably me because <laughs> as slow as my brain is at times, if I start talking before my brain kicks in, I've done got myself in trouble. <laughs> Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness 
and superfluity of knowledge, and receive with meekness the engrafted word. What does that mean, Bill? That means, that means if we're out here telling dirty jokes everywhere we go, or talking with filthy language, yeah, shouldn't be done. It shouldn't be done. We can't serve God and serve Satan at the same time. Yeah. And if we're out here telling dirty jokes or, or taking God's name in vain or being lewd, I think that's the word I'm looking for, lewd or rude or whatever you want to call it, to people, that's not that's not being Christ-like. That's more like being Satan-like. If we're if everything comes out of our mouth, mouth is defiling the Bible, how, how on earth can we call it ourselves Christians? Okay. You know, we was talking during Sunday school this morning. There's going to be a lot of Christians. Don't be surprised. The judgment rose and went, well, Lord, I served you. Lord, I thought I was doing what needed to be done. We need to take this in the heart. It's time to get serious for God. We we can't serve him on Sunday and then on Monday morning get out and act like everyone said. It don't work. We're either for God or we're against it. Can't even see. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. You know, we can sit around and listen, but if we don't take what we've learned by listening and put it to some kind of good deed, we're deceiving ourselves. That's right. I mean, there's a lot of good messages going on in, in a lot of churches this morning. But if everybody just sits there and listens, and they walk out that door and they don't put what they learned into motion, yeah. what good did they hear them to hear? For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. I, I can't help but kind of snigger when I read that. Because you can look at yourself in a glass. You pull that glass out here a little bit, and your face looks so funny. I don't know, maybe I just ain't got enough to do, but I kept myself doing that every <laughs> now and then. <laughs> Looking in the glass to how funny my face looks. But seriously, if you could put your face down in that glass and put a lid on it, that's about the same thing. Is hearing the word and not doing it. Not acting. Not using it. Not using it. You know, like the Christians there, I mean, we have right there says a lot. You know, we want to say it or do it, but we never get to it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, 
and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. Now, how do we forget what kind of man we are or a woman? Now, now I, I, I know as we grow older, we get forgetful. I can't remember half the stuff that I used to think of And it's, that's scary when you get to that point where you can't remember things. And then there's the ones that get Alzheimer's and dementia. Now they can't help if they can't forget or they can't remember anymore. And that's a bad shape to be in. I know I watched my mother. She had Alzheimer's. And I watched her from being a happy person to just sit. It's like she had no clue that she was even in the world. She just sat and stayed. When you could speak to her, she just sat and stayed. Or stared. She couldn't talk back to you. She didn't speak to her. She just sat. And that's terrible. That's so terrible to watch. But we need to be doing all we can do what we've got a mind to do it with. Because as we get older, our mind starts shifting. And I don't reckon they've got no cure for it. They've got medicine that can kind of slow it down where it don't uh, 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 progress as fast. But can you imagine what it would be like to sit here and listen to a message this morning and walk out that door and you can't remember what that message was. You can't remember the first part of it. That would be so terrible. But yet, some people like it. They'll sit here and listen to the message and they can walk out the door and somebody say, what the preacher preach on this morning? Oh, uh, the Bible or the pulpit. I mean, just give you some old crazy answer because they don't know any more than Job's turkey what the preacher preached on. That's terrible. Now, if I come up here next Sunday and you ask me what I preached on, nine times out of ten, I'm not going to be able to tell you. I'm, now, I'm not saying this to be funny. I am serious. If I walk in that church, next, that door next Sunday morning, and somebody asks me what I preached on today, nine times out of ten, I'm going to say, because I can't. My mind just don't work that well no more. I'm just praying and hoping and praying that God will let me have my mind while I'm behind this pulpit. Because if it gets before I'm just saying old crazy stuff, I ain't doing nobody no good. I need to get down. They can find you a new pipe. Amen. And it's scary when you get to that point to where you can't remember from one week to the next what you preached on the week before. That is very scary. It is. Philip, if you used to get up here and take the like you did this morning. And somebody asked you next week what you teach on today. 
And you couldn't remember. Well, that scared me. <laughs> we need to take every bit of energy we have and put it to work for the Lord. That may be why I can't remember like I used to do. Because I didn't work for God like I should have. Well, that's crazy, please. I believe that. If you don't use what God's given you to use, what's going to happen? You take it away from you. You're going to take it away from you. Amen. For he beholdeth himself and doeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he is. That'd be an awful shape to be in. If you forget what manner of man you are, is it possible that you could forget that you're saved? I mean, if 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 you get dementia or Alzheimer's, wouldn't that be awful to forget that God has saved your soul? Yeah. Right. My mom used to come off with some crazy stuff after she got Alzheimer's. You never heard nothing like that from her when she was in her right mind. And that hurts when you hear them say stuff that, that you know would never leave those lips when they was in their right mind. Whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he be, he be he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed. In his work. He's in the work. Amen. As long as we're doing what God has called us to do. And I believe that everybody that's a Christian, everybody that's saved, that's covered by the blood, has a calling on their life. It may be singing. It may be teaching. It may be booking the same. It may be taking care of the money. But everybody that is covered by the blood has a calling on their life. Number one, everybody ought to be a witness. Right? Yeah, yeah. I like to ask a question. You know, you're talking about this man here, talking about Christianity and all like that, talking about work and stuff like that. I just come to my mind here, would there be a good Christian and a bad Christian? Or they could give a kind of Christian. I'll be saying, well, but you know, some people look at it different. I said, you know, you do something at church, you get like shunned or something like that. I just wonder if that be the bad Christian or be the good Christian. But y'all the same, see? Well, you either are one or you ain't one. Yeah. That's it. You, 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 you can toss this anything you want to, but you either are one, you're living for God, or you ain't. You can't straddle the fence. Because if you do, you're going to get burnt. And believe me, electric fence can burn you. Now, I see a lot of stuff happen in churches, you know, maybe it's fast stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It makes you think, though. Yeah. It makes you think 
Were they a good Christian or were they bad Christian? Like you said, they're no different. But see, you still got to. You either are one or you ain't. You show me a church that keeps breaking up or has a, a division in it. I'll show you a church that's got some deceived people in it. They think. They're on the straight and narrow. But if there's divisions in that church, something wrong. They're hearing, but they ain't doing it. Or they may not even be hearing. I had a teacher. I was in school. I despised that woman for teaching. I probably knew her mom that But she had a real shrill voice. And you could get her upset about something. And she'd harp on that for two weeks. And you get to where you get. Shoot them out, you know. And I think a lot of Christians do that. So called Christians. They'll do that. They'll hear something they don't want to hear. And they'll get where they just tune it out. Yeah, they hear what they want to hear. Well, let's take a look at this day and time. You know, preachers get their. Uh, make the dog computer. So look at that. Yeah. Like Dan said, you don't need to hear what you want to hear. Right. And they're teaching out of books and they ain't no more close to what a Bible needs to be. And yet they they wonder why the world and the shape it's in. They need to get out of these so-called books that they call a Bible and get back into the Word of God. There are so many false prophets in this day and time. You gotta be careful. You really do. Because if this if the preacher standing before you is not in this Bible, I don't know what I'm talking about. He's not in this Bible. He's not prophet. He's more or less tickling your ears because he's not in the true word of God. He's giving you what you want to hear. There's churches probably in this town That'll say, you can live like you want to. Just come to church on Sunday and have that pocket book before you come so that you can make my life better. And that's what it amounts to, Brother Daniel. So you can make my life better. It don't matter how you live during the week as long as you come to church on Sunday and have that billfold filled up when you come. So you can make my life better, then you're going to be fine. What is that? That's a ball face lie straight out of the pit's head. If you can't live Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, like you live on Sunday, something's wrong. You're a hearer, but you ain't doing we need all of us. And I'm including myself. I don't do near what I need to be doing. I fail God every day. I do. And I'll be the first to admit it. We all do, if we're honest with ourselves. 
Because we're not perfect. And we ain't going to be perfect. Until we step out on the to go. Be careful on how we act around other people. Be careful what we say around other people. Uh, before hurting other people, you got some down on you. Amen. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridled not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion will remain. And you know, because the Bible says this man here, it's not men, but only men who do this. Women can be just as guilty as men. And I'm not going to say nothing about gospel. <laughs> I wrote it back our dream. And <laughs> but truly, we can't bottle our tongue. You know where we at with God? <clears throat> just, just this week, I heard. I've heard some people talk that hurt other people. And it come out of Christian's mouth. And I don't understand how Christians can say stuff that hurts other people. And come to church on Sunday, well, I love the Lord. If they love the Lord, why ain't they doing what God commanded them to do? Amen. 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 We all, we all need to watch. If we don't know who's watching, who's, who's looking at It may be a Seven or eight year old child. Well, they can do that. They ain't nothing wrong with it. They're Christians. What kind of message do we send to our friends and our family, our neighbors? If we're letting them hear the way we talk about it. It's hurtful. It's not only hurtful to the people that's been talked about, it's hurtful to people that are using. And it's hurtful to the ones that say it. They don't realize it. But they're hurting themselves. Be ears when we do it. That's a message. I hope somebody's got something out of it. I don't know why God gave me that today. You know, I always say here to be Christians. I know we all here got friends that don't go to church and we're not Christians. You know, when I'm around people like that, I kind of watch what I say. You know, don't get mad or something like that. Right. But you know, you have to bite your tongue sometimes. Oh, yeah. You know, they, they're good people, but they got, they're not in church and they're not going to say, you know, running boogies over there, they're close off. But they all were friends, you know. They've yeah. known for years and years and years. And I kind of sometimes, you know, just say, uh, you know, have a good day or something like that. You know, try to build their day up. They seem like they're following their fear sometimes. Yeah. And I know everybody here's got friends, not, not saved. But you know, 
You know, we're supposed to show everybody love. I mean, just because somebody's on the boat or somebody's gay, we can't cast them aside. We don't have the right to do that. We're supposed to show them love. Now, there's a lot of preachers that tell you if the person's gay, it's like they don't have no no soul the way they want you to treat them. But they got a soul just the same as Rosie, Bill, Brian, Daniel, or anybody does. If we don't show them love, how are they going to ever figure out that they're headed down the wrong path? I mean, you just can't set all the gays aside and let them go to hell. You gotta get the word to them. Let them know that they're in the wrong, but do it loving. Don't preach to them with hate in your heart. And that's that's where a lot of preachers go wrong. If they preach against sin, they preach it with hate. You gotta preach it with love for somebody to accept. If you're preaching to somebody about their sin and you're preaching or teaching to them with hate in your heart, you're just driving them further and further away. And when they get further and further away, it's going to be that much harder. Much harder to get them back.